What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Check out this place. This is Crash Bandicoot Part 8. We are now beginning the Great Hall, which is the alternate ending for Crash Bandicoot. Uh, not the true ending, but the alternate ending, as I have said before. And as uh, we've also learned, that you have to get all of the clear gems. The color gems do not count. And you can, pr uh, so, you know, you don't you don't need to get those, but you, knew, you do need to get them to get all of the clear gems. But anyway, so... Uh, you can see pretty much what it is. All you're doing is just jumping on the gems. Uh, you can die here, so you do want to be careful, but there is no penalty for dying outside of dying, so you don't want to come in here with uh, <laughs> uh, low lives. And the jumping's not too difficult. You know, it's uh, pretty much like every other platform jumping that you've done before. And if you see there, uh, T Tana is wearing her green skirt, which she was going to originally wear, instead of uh, her blue one that she's wearing in the final version of the game. And you can see here that the, uh, for whatever reason, the castle is not on fire. The blimp is still there. And let me see. Kind of looked like she was wearing her blue one there. I don't know. All right, so uh, Papu sold the ruins of Castle Cortex to a resort developer. He then used the proceeds to open a, a big and tall shop on the island. So these are the uh, epilogues that happen to all of the characters after the game. Uh, after intense therapy and eight years of higher education, Dr. Rue went on to write the well-received book, Through the Eye of the Vortex, a study of rapid evolution and its consequences. Uh, Kuala Kong moved to Hollywood and landed a motion picture deal of universal proportions. Currently, he is working with a speech therapist to improve his uh, diction. I believe that's how it's spelled. Well, his speech, pretty much, because he doesn't talk. At all, uh, Finchart moved to Chicago, where he now owns and uh, operates a citywide sanitation company. He is saving money for his upcoming gubernatorial campaign. So I can see he's going to uh, run for governor. After the di uh, disappearance of his mentor, Dr. Nitrous Brio re rediscovered his first love, tending bar, and uh, because he mixes the uh, potions that he has in those beakers together. See, uh, the world has heard nothing more of Cortex since Crash Four and his plans, but evil geniuses are harder to squash than cockroaches. So, Cortex wasn't actually destroyed. Instead, uh, he, you know, went on to, uh, you know, he disappeared, and uh, he. You know, obviously hasn't been seen from since, but that, that just kind of happened. That, it doesn't say what happened to Crash and Tawny. You can see there she is wearing her blue skirt there. So I guess after you get on the uh, bird, she is wearing the blue one. So I guess she somehow escapes on her own instead of Crash coming to save her. In this version, I, you know, I, I'm not 100% sure on that. But, you know, because she wasn't waiting there, uh, because she was already waiting there for him ahead of time. So that kind of implies that she got out by herself. But what's odd is the castle not being destroyed because in the you know the true ending it was destroyed presumably presumably because you defeated Pinstripe and Brio. Well, you still beat Pinstripe and Brio yet the castle's not on fire. So I'm not sure if that is the real reason why the castle is on fire. You know I don't know. The game doesn't really say about it, but uh, you know that, that that's the game you you've seen you know through the past. Uh, several parts, you know, seven parts, and that was that's the entire game. It's a fun game, really, really fun game. I, it's one, it's the first Crash game that I ever played, first video game that I ever played, actually. And I, I've, I've always had fun with it. It's you know, it's it's challenging enough so, to where it's hard, but not too hard. Uh, you know, there are a few levels that stand out as being hard or harder than the rest of the game, but you know. A large majority of, of the game is actually pretty easy, you know, the first island, very easy. Portions of the second island, well, most of the second island is very easy, and a lot of the third island is very easy as well. So, really fun game, you know, I definitely suggest playing it if, uh, if you don't, if you haven't already or don't have it. And, uh, but now I'm going to go ahead and talk about the trivia and everything for the game. And so here we go. Uh, Crash Bandicoot is a platform 
game made by Naughty Dog in 1996 for the PlayStation, featuring the character by the same name while playing while playing Crash Bandicoot must fight Dr. Neo Cortex and his henchmen in order to save Tana, his beloved Bandicoot girlfriend from Cortex. This game was made when Naughty Dog had only 10 employees as well as being originally a re release on the PlayStation. It was also emulated on the PlayStation Network on December 4th, 2006, though uh, through which it can be played on the PlayStation Portable uh, or the PSP, PlayStation Vita, and as of operating system update 1.70 on the PlayStation 3, it has sold 6.82 million copies globally. So you can play there. You can actually buy it for about six dollars, unless it goes on sale. But that's its normal price is just six dollars. Definitely suggest playing it. Uh, the game came out for the U.S. on August 31st, 1996. For Europe, no November 2nd. Japan, December 6th. PlayStation Network. Uh, instead of the emulated version, just like a, a digital download version on for the North North America, May 3rd, 2007, and for Europe, June 22nd, 2007. Uh, let me see gameplay. The gameplay in Crash Bandicoot is noticeably noticeably simple, simpler than the series' later iterations. Crash doesn't learn any skills throughout the game. He is able only to jump and use a spin attack. The only animal that Crash can ride in the game is a warthog, which was reused in the next two games, the, the riding aspects of it. Uh, there are three islands in the game between which 32 levels are divided as follows. The six boss levels are included in, uh, in this list here. Uh, we already know all the levels, so I won't worry about reading those. We already know the boss fights, so I'm not going to worry about reading those. The crates, however, I will read. Uh, the outline crates, the crash crates, iron crates, ir arrow crates, basic crate, checkpoint crate, aku aku crate, TNT crate, exclamation crate, bounce crate, uh, question mark crate, gems, keys, and one point. Those are the crates and the other items. Uh, so I'll, I'll read the story because you know it kind of gives a little bit more detail about the game than what the game by itself tells you. Somewhere southeast of Australia rests three little islands. Teeming with wildlife, two humans, however, have been expanding or experimenting with the local furry cr creatures in order to form a destructive and evil army of mutants. Uh, let me see. Doctor Nitrous Brio creates a machine called the Evolvaria, an invention capable of turning animals anthem anthropo anthropomorphic, which his ever pushy employer and main series antagonist takes the credit. One night in his castle, Dr. Neocortex has just captured two bandicoots, one male and one female. They are both put under the evolver array and both work successfully. Dr. Cortex plans to make the male the leader of his Cortex Commandos for world domination and, and, ins and inserts the evolved male crash into his patented Cortex Vortex, a mind-controlling device designed to brainwash mammals and turn them into evil henchmen. Even though Dr. Brio warns Cortex that the Vortex is not ready, Crash turns out to be an utter failure and is rejected by the Vortex. Crash is chased by Cortex throughout the lab, who is, attempt who is attempting to catch him, but the, but the marsupial accidentally breaks through a window and falls into the sea, but Tana, the female bandicoot, and his mate is still in Cortex's clutches, clutches. Crash washes up on the beach of his home island, having survived the fall, and sets out to save Tana before Crash can do anything terrible to her. Knowing full aware that Crash will come back for Tana, Cortex sends out his best henchman, one of them also being a failed experiment to stop him. Uh, it doesn't say who the failed experiment is, but it may later on. Uh, Cortex's plan, however, is spoiled when Crash eventually reaches his toxic waste factory and shuts it down. Yeah, but that's probably Ripper Roo, uh, the failed experiment, because it doesn't go on here to say. Uh, Crash eventually reaches his toxic waste factory and shuts it down when battling the CEO and Cortex's bodyguard, Pinstripe. Cortex Crash soon enters Cortex's sinister castle. He confronts Embryo in his lab room where the mad doctor drinks a potion and turns into a monster found in the ground, which causes the castle to go up in flames. But his plans ruined. Cortex faces Crash atop his airship. After a long fight, Crash watches in awe as the rocket platform that Cortex stands on explodes, and Cortex apparently falls to his death. Crash is finally reunited with his beloved Tana. The couple take the airship and fly into the sunset. Alternate ending instead of the other ending being the true ending or an extension like in other games of the series. The first game has a different ending entirely. An alternate ending if you collect all the gems and take the new route in the Great Hall, 
here, Crash finds Tana in the castle, but does not fight Dr. Cortex. Crash and Tana escape together on a, on a friendly bird, and many stories are told of the bosses. Um, already see, we have already read what, what all those happen. Curiously, the epilogue, uh, I was just reading here to see if it actually uh, mattered, but this is a bit of uh, uh, something that was written in here. Curiously, the epilogue mentioned that Cortex disappeared. This may be due to Crash apparently never fighting him, thus he never accidentally rediscovered, uh, d rediscovered something that will be in the next game, Crash Bandicoot 2. Uh, and because, you know, uh, because in, if you had followed the, you know, crack, Cortex falling from his bl uh, blimp in his air rocket pad or whatever, uh, you would have seen what carries over to Crash 2. Though that doesn't mean that the other characters didn't receive their closure. For example, Doctor Who is mild, mildly referenced in the sequel, Crash Bandicoot 2, and Papu Papu and Pinstripe weren't even seen until uh, a later Crash game titled Crash Team Racing, which I will do a let's play for once I get to it. Uh, I'll talk about the characters. All the characters were voiced by one guy. They were voiced by Brendan O'Brien, uh, who, who goes on to voice some of the characters later on in the uh, in the series. But anyway, so uh, Crash Bandicoot, the hero of the game, once just an ordinary Bandicoot taken from his home by the evil Dr. Cortex to be the general of his Cortex commandos for world domination. Crash gained his jump and spin attack from the Evolve Array, but when he was raised and into the Cortex Vortex to become evil, he is rejected by the machine and gets chased by an angry Cortex. Although Crash escapes by jumping out the window, Death Tana, his bandicoot girlfriend, in the f hands of Cortex's men, so he sets out on a long adventure to save her. Aku Aku, Crash's best friend, he's a magical mask who protects him from enemies. He is first seen on Insanity Beach in special crates. He helps Crash on his quest and wants to stop Cortex. Aku Aku does not speak in this game. Dr. Neo Cortex, the main antagonist, Cortex was mocked and ridiculed by people, so he sought revenge against humanity by making an army of monsters. He called Cortex Commandos and take over the world. He then joined with another mad scientist, Dr. Nitrous Brio, and told him to make a machine called the Evolver Ray along the Cortex Vortex. When Embryo finished, Cortex stole the credit, and because of his low self-esteem, Brio didn't say anything. Together, they began messing with the island's ecosystem, turning animals and plants into mutants. It seemed like Cortex's plan was going well until Crash was made. Dr. Nitrous Brio, a supporting villain, being his boss's assistant, led to some rival rivalry, and it was actually Embryo that made the Evolver Ray, but his low self-esteem let Cortex take the credit. It seems to he seems to be obsessed with potions and vials. He stutters frequently and is nervous about what he's doing. Tana, a female bandicoot who was Crash's girlfriend at the time, she is another bandicoot Cortex tried to evolve and mutate. She's also the sole purpose for Crash's uh, sole purpose. Crash goes on his journey. Pinstripe Potteroo, a mafia style, fancy dressed mutant Potteroo named her armed with a Tommy gun and, and a maniacal laugh. Pinstripe was in charge of the radioactive Cortex power on Cortex Island and even had an office. It is possible that after his boss fight, when he shoots the reactor at the back, it stops pollution going into the sea. It could also be one of the reasons the castle catches fire. Ripperoo, a perfect example of an experiment gone wrong. This was Cortex's first test subject, and it shows, unfortunately, he had one too many. Shots from the Cortex Vortex resulting in an insane kangaroo with a straight jacket and crazy eyes. This fight with Crash took place at the top of the waterfall on the second island where he was probably sent to stay. <laughs> Papu Papu, the fat leader of the tribesmen on Insanity Island. He is the only boss who is who was not working for Cortex. He only tried to kill Crash because he was got woken up from his nap. Koala Kong, a mutated koala bear who is enough to build on him to be a bodyguard, despite how big he is, he is not the brightest mutant, as shown in his boss fight where he is shown, showing off his moves, giving Crash time to spin a boulder at him. Analysis. Crash Bandicoot is notable for its rich themes and subtext, subtext which show the influence of Eastern philosophy as well as ideology of the Elizabethan era. The game largely deals with balance, harmony, and the natural order. These concepts are embodied in the duality present throughout the game, good and evil. Uh, natural and man-made, intelligence and, phys and physical strength, emotion and logic. The s setting also reflects this with many level types appearing twice. Opposites, according to the game, are meant to be in balance. The narrative 
serves as, as an exploration of what happens when harmony is disrupted. The primary conflict of the game is this disturbance of this balance by Cortex, whose desire for power and control lead him to act against the natural order. Formerly balanced between good and evil, he is driven to madness by his suffering at the hands of fellow scientists. Now almost entirely evil, he spreads his imbalance to people and places. He comes into he comes in contact with his his uh, uh, it says here his spoiled Brio, for instance, becomes servile to Cortex rather than an evenly matched rival. Cortex's enterprise rains down destruction on the islands through pollution and tampering with nature, creating a decaying dystopia with him at the throne. This disruption of the natural order leads to the creation of Crash. Although intended by Cortex to be an instrument of further destruction, he serves as a means for the natural order to restore his help when an evil entity is introduced, a good one soon follows. Inevitably, the two opposites meet and balance is restored. Crash Bandicoot may function as a tragedy in the Shakespearean sense. By this understanding, Cortex serves as the tragic hero, although only his fall is shown during the course of the game. He was once a respected intellectual. The turning point for, for him came when his newest theories were ridiculed. Despite their accuracy, this drove him to seek revenge at the cost of his humanity. In this sense, Cortex is the victim. His evil plan is merely his own attempt to restore balance by exacting his revenge on those that first attacked him. The restoration of the natural order through the, through the confrontation of Crash and Cortex provides catharsis. Uh, catharsis. In the end, Cortex fails and is left with nothing. Crash, the instrument of the natural order, restores balance, but in doing so loses his innocence. Like Cortex, he comes out a different person, unable to return to his natural animal state, despite having done nothing wrong. Uh, the themes of the game are, conveyed, are con conveyed not just through the action, but through the sim symbolism as well. Aquak, who is the embodiment of the natural order, aiding Crash in his efforts to restore balance. Conversely, the Cortex Vortex re represents the dis disruption of balance by Cortex. In Far Eastern mythology, the shell of a turtle represents heaven, while its under underside represents earth. The appearance of turtles upside down in the, in the game symbolizes the disorder and chaos Cortex has caused in the natural order. The TNT crates foreshadows the events of the game, with the countdown from 3 to 1 representing the journey across the three islands, and the explosion representing the confrontation between Crash and Cortex and violent restoration of balance. The Wumpa Islands themselves are important symbols. They represent the three acts of the game, the beginning, middle, and, and end. The islands also reflect the changing mindset of Crash and the destruction of his innocence, first shown to be benign and tranquil, but becoming dark and threatening as time goes on. Each island also presents a different form of civilization. The first is primitive and only one that lives and the only one that lives harmoniously with nature. Consequently, it is the only one shown to be healthy strong. The second civilization has failed long ago. Its existence is only hinted at through the ruins it has left behind. It, it seems to have been mighty, but ultimately failed and has been taken over by the forest. The third civilization is that of Cortex. This too is mighty, but works against nature, which leads to its downfall. The events on the third island revealed to the player that the civilization failed because it went against nature, indicating that indicating the cause of the second civilization's destruction. destruction. Therefore, the message of these civilizations is that those who do not coexist harmoniously with nature will be destroyed by it. Considering the game's strong commentary on civilization, the prevalence of hogs throughout the islands may be referenced to William Golding's Lord of Flies. Don't know how that ties into anything, but, you know, it's... I've never heard any... Uh, anyone from Naughty Dog ever say that this analysis was true or not. You know, that's just someone's or a group of people's uh, you know picking picking the game apart and finding some resemblances to this you know I don't know if you know it, it makes sense you know and it kind of gives a little bit more depth to the story I guess of the game but uh, it's you know it, it's whatever you want it, want it to be I guess that you know the analysis of it but I'm going to uh, go to the trivia now an early build of Crash Bandicoot ha had a different health bar in which each hit point was demonstrated by a dot. In the Japanese version of this game, Papu Papu has five hits instead of three. He also swings his club faster, making it harder. In the Japanese version, different music was used for boss fights. Crash is the only character with black irises. Boulder Dash is a pun on the phrase Balder Dash. The level Rolling Stones is, re is a reference to the music band The Rolling Stones. The level Up the Creek is a reference to the 1984 movie of the same name. Tana appeared in many of the, many of the Crash games following this one. 
in pictures and such as Easter eggs. She is rarely seen in person, though. Although, although the rocket sled stands on it, and his the cortex stands on it, and his boss out explodes in other games. You can see see as well in the intro video. A bunch of cages can briefly be seen. The entire top row of cages say kangaroo above them, probably because they failed many times trying to create Ripperoo. On the second row, they say iguana, Potteroo, and koala. The iguana cage might be a mistaken mistake, considering there are no evil iguanas in the series, or this may supposed to say Komodo Dragon for one of the Komodo brothers because they were originally intended to be a boss fight but the bottom row has two cages marked Bandicoot which could be either Crashes and Coco's or Crashes and Tonics. Coco is, an, is a character that we will see in Crash 2. If Crash misses some crates in a level they will come down on his head after he has finished the level. This only happens if Crash has completed the level without losing a life. This is the only Crash game to use passwords and Crash is falling out the window of Cortex Castle in the intro. Cortex can for a second be seen flying on his rocket set in the distance, then he disappears. The spoof of Crash Bandicoot appears in the episode of The Simpsons. Crash is instead used, named Dash Dingo. He has a similar name, the game has a similar logo and music, and there's a spoof of Oof Oof, a separate Australian man's head. In the prototype version, some levels and bosses used to have a different order, including the unused level Storm Ascent. However, only four levels were not used in the prototype version compared to the final version. A lot of fans have named this game the hardest crash game mostly due to some of the level's designs and no ability ability rewards after winning the boss fights. Yeah. Uh yeah, there's more about this game and I'm surprised it's not here. Uh such as the way the levels were were uh laid out and all that and the way they were changed and I will See, I, I could have swore this was going to have it on here. And also, to see if I could find some unused levels as well. Now, let me see. Okay, let me think. I'll try to find that information. I'll, I'm going to have to cut real quick, but I'll try to find that information. I'll be back in a second. Alright, so there's a lot of information about this game. Uh, a lot of it's taking me too long to read. The only thing that I did want to read about was the level order, the original uh, level order, to what it was supposed to be uh, for the prototype, for, uh, for the first island, Sandy Island. The level order was supposed to be. Insanity Beach, Jungle Rollers, The Great Gate, Hogwild, Upstream, Papu Papu, Rolling Stones, Boulders, Native Fortress, Up the Creek, Ripperoo. So you would have fought Ripperoo on the first island instead of the second island. You would have had uh, Up the Creek on the first island as well. And you can tell uh, Hogwild is a little bit early and there's uh, uh, Boulders is moved as well. Second island would have been a little bit shorter, only having the Lost City, Temple Ruins, Boulder Dash, Sunset Vista, Jaws of Darkness, and Kuala Kong. Jaws of Darkness being moved from the third island to the, sec to the second island here. Third island would have started with Cortex Power. Then you went in. Then you would have went into Heavy Machinery. It makes a little bit more sense because in Cortex Power, you can, at the beginning, you can see you're going from the jungle into it, which makes a little bit more sense. Then Heavy Machinery. Then Generator Room, Toxic Waste, Pinstripe, Road to Nowhere, the High Road, so two bridge sections instead of one. Lights Out, Slippery Climb, Nitrous Brio, The Lab, Fumbling in the Dark. Stormy Ascent and then Cortex. Stormy Ascent being the cut level. Uh, note the that whole hog in the Great Hall are missing. There is an unseen level named Stormy Ascent. Find out. Uh, uh, it's the only level with the same layout as in the final version found uh, with hacking, suggesting this was as far as the team worked on it, removing it sometime after this prototype had been built. Now you can see here, or well, you can't see, but if you listen, uh, that. Slippery Climb was moved after Lights Out, but before Brio, which makes a lot more sense instead of where it is uh, here, uh, you know, lower down right after, you know, at, when you're on the other side, on the other, just entering the rocks of the second portion of Cortex Island, you know, it should be a, a lot, I, w I would say, you know, it shouldn't be after Lights Out, it should be 
right at right, you know, right, right as you're climbing up the castle wall, right after castle machinery, not, you know, not right before lights out. Lights out kind of seems to be like a basement area. It should be a uh, slippery climb and then lights out, then you go to Brio. Or, you know, Brio, then the lights out being the top of the castle. But anyway, so, uh, that's about all, you know, that's about all I want to uh, say. You know, there's, there's some different, there's a lot, there's actually a lot of stuff that you can find out about this game. Uh, you know, just different things that were from the original or from the prototype version. But uh, I'm not going to talk about that because I usually don't. You know, I just kind of go over some uh, lesser known uh, facts that are easier to find. Uh, but anyway, so I thank you for watching. There won't be a challenge to the, uh, the video since this is a wrap up video. And uh, so I'm done with Crash 1. I again, definitely suggest you play it if you haven't. You know, you can play it on the, you know, if you have a PS3 or you can get a disc. For the PS1, 2, 3, uh, you know, the, all the systems can play it. Get it from get it on the PS3 from the digital, uh, from the PlayStation Store. You know, there's a lot of different ways you can buy it. Definitely suggest you do that. But again, thank you for watching. I will be starting Crash Bandicoot 2 next. So until then, later, everyone.